Привет, всем заблагородным! I'm Russian, and I'll tell my tales from the Russian point of view, because I also want to be heard. So, it seems that the fans of the great are really rooting for the Catherine and Peter to be together. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, it's not my first day on the internet, there is no way I'm telling anyone who they can and can't shape. I'm not crazy like that. But, because this is my channel, nothing stops me from telling you about Peter's one and only true love. You know, I love Catherine, I really do, and I truly think that she was a much better politician than Peter ever was. I do feel obliged to say, however, that whether it was right for the Catherine to take the throne from her son is up for debate among Russian historians and people in general. But Catherine definitely was better suited for the role of a monarch than Peter, and because of that, whenever we talk about any book, movie, TV show, or even some sort of historical debate that mentions 18th century, the limelight is always on Catherine and whoever is her lover at the time. While Peter and his story is shunned away. Elizaveta Vorenzova, that's the name of Peter's mistress, does not appear on the big screen nearly as much as Catherine. And even when she does, she is given a role of a villainess, when in real life she was much closer to becoming a Cinderella. Elizaveta was far from beautiful. Catherine did not hesitate to give her the most unflattering descriptions. Very ugly, dirty child with an olive skin. And after contracting a smallpox, her face was covered not with pits, but real scars. That was Catherine's first words about Elizaveta, who at the time was just an 11-year-old child and far from being anyone's mistress. Later on, after Elizaveta became Peter's lover, Catherine would add even more colourful words to her portrait. Fat and awkward, with a droopy face, and her most well-known epithet, Shrekaroja, is really hard to translate. It means something along the lines of wide-faced, but the word face is actually an offensive one. As you can see, Catherine wasn't a fan of Elizaveta, even though by that time she had more than her fair share of lovers. I don't think she cared about Peter, though. It's more likely that her ego was hurt. Catherine was considered to be one of the most beautiful women of the time, while her husband fell in love with the ugliest woman in the palace. Though Elizaveta's unattractiveness might have been exaggerated. For example, while Catherine emphasised her dark skin, French ambassador Jean-Louis Favier claimed that Elizaveta had a very beautiful white skin. Well, at the end of the day, Elizaveta definitely wasn't beautiful, we just don't know to what degree. Her portraits depict a very different picture. Some show her to be quite lovely, while others, well, not so much. But considering that even modern-day photos can be photoshopped, who's to say how much 18th century artists flattered their models? After all, she was Peter's favourite. And he didn't care about anything. He loved her just the way she was. Though the court couldn't understand how come the emperor could be so blind, the answer was easy. They were initially drawn to each other due to both being unloved children. Peter might have been a future emperor of Russia on paper, but in reality everyone saw him as nothing more than a puppet in the hands of Empress Elizaveta Petrovna. Had he been brought to Russia as a child, as it was stated in the will of Russia's first empress, he might have earned himself a place in a royal court. But as a 13-year-old boy, he never managed to become anything more than a Holsteiner, a foreigner to rise to the Russian throne. Elizaveta's story was no less heartbreaking. Her parents never truly loved her. She was outshined by her brothers and a little sister, who will eventually do her happiness. But Elizaveta and Peter shared more than just loneliness. They had a lot of similar interests. What Catherine considered to be boring and unworthy of a royal person, Elizaveta found thrilling. Just like Peter, she found it amusing to play a pretend war. She would dress in a uniform and command the soldiers. 
Aside from that, they also like to play cards, drink and smoke. I know, not the most enlightened of habits, but people still find fun. I like the words of Diderot and Voltaire. And as much as Elizabeth was keen on showing her position to people in court, at the end of the day she was still a gentle and caring soul. She never pressured Peter to divorce Catherine, and despite the fact that many people believe her to be quite smart, she never bothered with the politics. It really seems that she was with Peter because she loved him, and he loved her as well. So much so that he decided to divorce Catherine and marry Elisabetta. It was actually this threat of divorce that prompted Catherine to organize a coup and overthrow the royal husband. And do you know who helped her? Elisabetta's little sister, Ekaterina. When Peter and Elisabetta were together, she would constantly berate her sister and Peter would have to defend his lover. Till the end of her days, Ekaterina prided herself for being the most active member of the revolution. After the coup, Elisabetta begged the now empress to let her be with Peter till the end, but she wasn't granted that simple wish. According to the witnesses, Elisabetta's and Peter's last embrace was so strong they had to be forcefully pulled away from each other. Maybe they knew that they will never see each other ever again. When in prison, Peter asked for only three things, his violin, his pipe, and his Elisabetta. But he was granted only the first two things. Peter was killed while imprisoned. Catherine ascended the throne, and Elisabetta was sent away to Moscow, into her father's estate. Most people now say that Catherine forgave Elisabetta because she organized her marriage and bought her a house using her own money. But I think that she simply made a golden cage for her once rival. I mean, can you imagine being forcefully married to a man you don't love, having to spend years with him, sleeping with him in one bed, giving birth to his children? I don't know. And, of course, the nasty remarks about Elisabetta Varansova didn't end with her palace life. For example, the French ambassador who was present at the wedding later said, The bride looked like a servant from a bad tavern. Ugly, rude, stupid, angry and arrogant. She swore like a soldier, screamed and spat when talking. And you know what? I keep thinking, was she screaming and shouting because she was uncultured? Or because the man she was forced to marry was an old soldier whom she never had met before. Well, what can I say? I don't like Peter as an emperor, and I am happy that Catherine took the reins. But I also wish Peter and Elisabetta could spend their life together in Goldstein, playing cards and drinking wine. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Subscribe if you want to learn more about Russian and Russian culture. Пока-пока.